Hey guys, it's Xander here, and we're back looking at Brews in Standard. Now this is a funky one I've put together for you guys. It's a Dragon Tribal deck. It's a hell of a lot of fun. It works way better than I thought it was going to when I put it together. But uh, yeah, I'll just go over the deck, talk about the interactions, and go over the sideboard real quick, and hopefully you guys enjoy the video. So, being Dragon Tribal, in the standard setting that we're in, this deck's not going to last long because of uh, rotation, but at the moment it's a whole lot of fun. So we're running a 4 of Sarkin Fireblood, which is for 3, 1, and 2 red, a 3 loyalty planeswalker. He's got 2 plus 1 abilities, so his first one is you may discard a card if you do draw a card, so looting. His second ability is add 2 mana in any combination of any colours, and then spend this mana only to cast dragon spells. So this allows us to play 6 mana dragons on turn 4, and it also is a uh, plus 1, his first plus 1, sorry allows us to loot, which we take full advantage of in this deck, and I'll go over that in a second. His Neg 7 ability is create four 5-5 five, five red dragon creature tokens with flying. So we're also running a 4 of Dragon's Horde. Now this is in here for mana fixing, it's dra draw card and it's ramp. It's all good things in this. So this is the 3 cost artifact, so it sits on the battlefield. And then whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you put a gold counter on Dragon's Horde. You tap, remove a gold counter from Dragon's Horde to draw a card, or it's got tap, add one mana of any colour. Uh, talking about abu abusing the looting from Sarkin, we're running a 3 of Liliana's Death Majesty. Again, this will rotate out very soon. Uh, for 5, so 3 and 2 black. It's a 5 loyalty planeswalker with plus 1. Create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Put 2 cards from your library into your graveyard. Getting our dragons into the bin, or getting cards into the bin, but we get, to we get creatures, so building us a board. It's Neg 3 ability, is return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colours and types. So it allows us to reanimate any one of our dragons over and over again, as long as she stays alive. So it's a really good card. The last ability, which is our ult, is Neg 7, destroy all non-zombie creatures. This could just blow out a game. Again, it's... If, it, if you're doing her ult, it's kind of a little win more-ish, because if they don't just kill her, you're probably winning anyway, but it's really just in here for the reanimation, which is great. And on the topic of reanimation, we're also running a 3 of Rise from the Grave, which is for 5 at sorcery speed, so it's really expensive, I get that, but the deck just gets there, and it, it seems to get the value out of really, really well. So this is put type creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Usually we're going for our own dragons, unless it's gonna be something better. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Again, with the zombie theme, but being able to get any one of our dragons from the grave after we've played it and they, they answer it, it's just allowing us to get more and more value out of the out of the dragons that we do have. Now we're running a tour of Vraska's Contempt, which is for four, two and two black. At instant speed, you exile target creature or planeswalker and you gain two life. Got to run some removal in this deck, or else we're just going to get run over. And this is some of the best removal that's in standard at the moment. We're also running more in the sideboard, I'll go over that in a second. Yogmoth's Vile Offering, which is for 5, so 4 and a black. It's a legendary sorcery, which means we have to have a legendary creature or planeswalker out to be able to play it. But when we do, you can put up to one type creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And you also get to... Destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker and then exile Yogmoth's Vile Offering. I've been looking for a long time for a deck that this actually slots into, like this card specifically, and I feel like this is a pretty good spot for it. I was running multiple copies of this, but I think running it in a one of is probably better. But yeah, it's a really good card. It's great in this. Being able to do, do a two for one is always great. And yeah, if you want to run more, run more, but I'm just running it in a one of. Going over the creatures, we're running a 4 of Demanding Dragon, which is for 5, 3, and 2 red, a 5-5 five, five with flying. So 5-5 five, five flying dragon, as though that wasn't good enough. When Demanding Dragon enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage to target opponent, unless that player sacrifices a creature. So this is removal, unless they take the damage, and if they do take the damage, it's 5 damage and a body for 5. So it is absolutely insane. And a lot of the times they're going to want to answer it because it is a big flying body. They're going to want to kill it. And unless they exile it, we're going to be getting it back with all our grave, grave retrieval stuff. Which 
makes all of our copies of, or all of our Grave Retrieval, extra copies of Demanding Dragon. So constant, just, if, so if they haven't got a board of creatures, this hits the board, they have to take 5 damage. If they don't have any creatures. Or if they do have creatures, this is killing creatures, and then you're swinging, and then if they can block, they're having to block because it's so big. But, yeah. The shit's insane. This, this card is so overlooked, and I reckon it's going to be huge after rotation. So, it's going to be replacing this guy, which is Glorybringer. So, we're running Glorybringer in a 3 of. While it's in standard, I want to be playing with it a lot, because I'm going to miss the hell out of this card. It's freaking insane. So, this is for th uh, 5. It's 3 and 2 red. A 4-4 four, four flying dragon with haste. So, I can attack the turn it comes in. Uh, you may exert Glorybringer as it attacks. If you do, you deal 4 damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls. An exerted creature can't untap during your next untap step. So, being able to get this, again, the same as Demanding Dragon with our Grave Retrieval stuff, they're going to try and answer it. If they don't exile it, we're just going to get it back with our Grave Retrieval stuff and keep swinging in for damage. And, yeah, awesome card. Going to suck when it's gone. It's really going to suck. On the Dragon Tribal stuff, got to run Lathless from M19. So, Lathless Dragon Queen is for 6, so 4 and 2 red. It's a 6-6 six, six with flying, legendary dragon. But whenever a another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 5-5 five, five red dragon token with flying. And it's also got pay 2, so 1 and a red. Dragons you control with plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Now, the non-token dragon entering the battlefield is really relevant because we can play a dragon and then neg 3 our Liliana and get another dragon. And that's got us four dragons in a turn. Because non-tokens, even from the graveyard, they're not tokens. So it's, yeah, very very quickly becomes something that they have to deal with. And if they deal with it, unless, again, unless it's exile. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but unless it's exile, we're going to keep getting it back. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, just to round out the creatures, we're playing a two of Bone Dragon, which is for three and two black. A 5-4 flyer. And this guy's cool because he's got a Grave Retrieval ability of his own. So we don't even need to bring him back. Except to use his own ability, which is pay 3 and 2 black. Exile 7 other cards from your graveyard. Return Bone Dragon from your graveyard to the battlefield. So all the stuff that we can't get back. Get rid of it. Get this guy back for 5. So he's a constant recurring threat. If the game's dragging out. A lot, like, a lot of the stuff, any one of the other dragons is going to be a better option for us to get back anyway. But being able to get a 5-4 back in the late game if we haven't got any more Grave Retrieval is always a good thing. So, that's rounding out all the creatures. You'll notice that there's nothing really low on the curve, but I don't know. It's just worked so, so far, so I know people are going to hound me for it. Uh, running a 4 of Lightning Bolt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> running a 4 of Lightning Strike, which is for 2. One and one red. At instant speed, you deal three damage to any target. It's red removal, and hits anything. It's great. And then we're also running... I want to be able to loot more. And our more loot stuff comes in the form of Cathartic Reunion, which is for two, one and a red at sorcery speed. As an additional cost to cast Cathartic Reunion, you discard two cards, and then you draw three cards. So this allows us to get rid of the shit that we don't need, or put, put our, our big dragons to the grave, and then draw into more cards. It's, it's a way better card than a lot of people give it credit for, and yeah, it slots really, really well into this deck. Also running a 3 of Tormenting Voice, which is for 2, so this is again for 2. Again at Sorcery Speed, but this one reads, as an initial cost to cast this spell, you discard a card, and you draw 2 cards. So. The amount of draw card in this deck allows us to hit our land drops reliably. It allows us to get the stuff into the bin that we need to get into the bin so that we can get it out of the grave with our retrieval stuff. And yeah, it just lets us get into more dragons. I'd like probably like to tweak around with it and see if I can do it in modern because I'm just so so happy with how the deck's worked so far. Uh, just running out the land base, uh, we're running a, four, a six of mountains, a four of swamps, a 4 of Dragon Skull Summit, which enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a swamp or mountain. We have a lot of them. Tap for black or red. Cathartic Slew, the cycle land, comes in tapped. Tap for black or red or cycle. Again, for more draw card. It's 
mana fixing. It's a swamp or a mountain, so it's, it helps our Dragon Skull Summits. And we're also running a four of Field of Ruin. All of the non-basics in standard that this thing can hit, that Field of Ruin can hit, is just awesome. So we're definitely running it a four of. Uh, that rounds out the lands to 22. I think that's the right number. Again, with so much draw card and discard and the ramp from the um, Dragon Sword, it's, it hasn't pulled up short on land in any of the games that I've played with it so far. But yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments. Just going over the sideboard here. We've got a lot of stuff here for anti-control. We're also running a little bit of Graveyard Hate and well, we're run a lot, running a lot of creatures and we can't really deal with that. We could just turn more into a bit of a red-black control deck with a uh, shitload of extra removal. So we're running a four of Duress. So target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That play discards that card at, at one black sorcery speed. So this is your control matchup. Creature matchups, Fatal Push. Again, all these cards are rotating out soon, which kind of sucks. Or most of these cards are rotating out soon. For one black, at instant speed, destroy target creature with converted mana cost two or less. Revolt, so if something of yours died, destroy target creature with converted mana cost four or less. Crook of Condemnation for two, running the this in a two of. It's an artifact that sits on the battlefield. It's one tap, exile target card from a graveyard. Or pay one. Exile, Crook of Condemnation, exile all cards from all graveyards. So we're always going to be running the top mode unless we haven't got anything useful in our grave, pretty much. But um, yeah, there's a lot of decks that abuse the graveyard or try to abuse it just as much as we're trying to. So yeah, we ne need some description of Anson. I, I didn't want to run Sentinel Totems in this because I wanted the selection. Uh, the other two copies of Vraska's Contempt, uh, two copies of Doomfall, which is for three, two and one black at sorcery speed. You choose one. You target player exiles a creature he or she controls, so it's removal. Or its target opponent reveals his or her hand, you choose a non-land card from it, and they exile that card. So this answers Scarab God, this answers all the, all the good shit that's in a lot of the control decks. Doomfall's just really, really good. And just to round out the sideboard here, we're running a two copies of Lost Legacy. This is going to be a card that I'm going to miss a hell of a lot after rotation, because it is so good. So this is for three, one and two black at sorcery speed. You name a non-artifact, non-land card. Search target player's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name and exile them. That player shuffles his or her library, then draws a card for each card exiled by uh, from their hand this way. So Lost Legacy gets rid of Teferi. It gets rid of Approach of the Second Sons. It gets rid of Nexus of Fate. All of these things that plague standard at the moment, Lost Legacy just goes, I don't give a shit. That's the sideboard. This is Dragon Grave. Deck's been pretty insane. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, as always, like, share, subscribe. If you liked the deck, if you didn't like the deck, if you look, agree or disagree with some of the cards in the deck, let me know in the comments. Uh, hit the bell for notifications so that you get all the new decks when I release them. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Keep questioning, guys.